not a Bentley, not Chris Stow. If you're doing it, you got an ATM. It's mm. a fact. What's up, everybody? I'm Finn McKenty. This is the Punk Rock NBA, and today I'm here to tell you the straight-up facts. The early to mid-2000s was the absolute peak of human civilization. We didn't have Jeffrey Epstein or COVID. John Cena wasn't a shill for the Chinese government. We didn't have to worry about any of that. It was all about aggressive inline on PS2, browsing the CD section at Best Buy to see if the new Three Days Grace album was out, and killing time until the season premiere of the OC was gonna come on. And of course, we can't forget about all the hotties in the juicy couture velour tracksuits with a little bit of whale tail poking out. Mm. And of course, a staple of that era, MTV Cribs. I'm Travis from Blink-182, and this is my crib. And with that, let's get into the video. Oh, this intro. Man, remember when everything on MTV and VH1 looked like this? With the After Effects 3D layers flying around in space, and the, like, Affliction-type curly Q stuff, like something out of Saints Row? And let's start with Bam Margera, the sweet young Bam when he still lived with his parents. Before he left home, it became the skater version of that girl with Nightmare Before Christmas seat covers in her 2001 Oldsmobile Alero. Wrestling with Phil in the den of his mom's house full of country goose knickknacks. It was just so wholesome. I love this thing with the teapot. The $90 teapot <laughs> she bought today because she was embarrassed. Look. 80 bucks. Why do we let advertisers make us feel insecure about absolutely every aspect of our lives? Like, even your teapot isn't good enough. We got this um, net thing in Christmas, and I don't know if I'm cool with it yet. I love the bedroom. You can kind of see him starting to go down the gothic road here with those, like, really ugly, cheap purple curtains and the weird out-of-place black net over his bed and Rab living in the basement. And he sleeps back here. He can see it all he wants. He's been here for a month and a half. But before we go on to the next phase of BAM's evolution, first I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. They've got tons of classes on topics around creativity and entrepreneurship like YouTube success with MKBHD, hand lettering with Jessica Hish. If I had to point to one particular class, it would be context is key social media strategy in a noisy online world with Gary Vaynerchuk. And the main takeaway here being the idea of jabs and right hook. Jabs are the social media posts that get your audience's attention engagement. And then right hooks are when you ask them to actually buy something. And it's about balancing those two things. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there's no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. This is my Nightmare Before Christmas fireplace. This is the heartogram emblem. I have tattoos of this symbol. But I have to say the stand energy here is a little bit weird. Although, I don't know if I have any room to talk since I do have two hate breed tattoos. I'm in the passenger seat and like, I'm definitely getting this if a hot girl sees me get out of this. Now that's just sad. Like imagine being into a dude because he's in the passenger seat of his friend's fancy car. That's just sad. But then again, this is Westchester, PA. Probably not a lot to choose from there. So if you're a girl, I guess, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And any guy who's not in a rusty 1994 Chevy S10 counts as husband material. And next up, we have Vince Neil from Motley Crue. Welcome to my crib. There's a lot of boomer dad energy here going into like excessive detail about the process of custom ordering his couch. I had this, this couch custom made. This whole piece right here is one giant piece. It's like 12 feet long. Oh yeah, that's really, yeah, dad, that's awesome. I'm glad you like your couch. This whole house is a great example of what I like to call the cheesecake factory aesthetic. Every rich person on the West Coast has some ugly ass house that looks like the inside of a cheesecake factory. So she's Italian. She speaks fluent Italian, which is, I'll tell you about later. This is some Brett Michaels energy. Like what is it with these guys? Is literally anything that a woman does a turn on to them? Ooh, brushing your teeth. Yeah. I like that, baby girl. Uh. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> okay, there's a lot going on in just this one shot. Number one, who has like a weird sex doll in their studio? There's a, a shitter over there too, in case you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Real classy, a shitter. There's a shitter over there. 
Oh, but look at this fucking beast. This is the car that Charles from Rock of Love needs to drive. A fucking bright yellow Hummer with flames painted on it. My only goal in life is to drive one of these. So if I get too drunk, Leah can drive it home. <laughs> Am I the only one who thinks it's in kind of bad taste for Vince Neil of all people to make jokes about drunk driving? Considering that he like literally killed his best friend that way? <laughs> I want everything in my life to have this aesthetic. Even the wheels look like they're made of an affliction shirt. And next up, Rob Deerdeck. Robbie Deerdeck. Big black. But this clip shows Rob for what he truly is, pure Dayton, Ohio energy. The hat, the baggy jeans, the DC shoes. Black on white, 22. <sighs> when the size of your rims was like a very important part of your identity. But my favorite part is the ATM. I got sick of, you know, rolling dice and gambling, shooting pool and people talking about their money and saying like, can I owe you tomorrow? No, you can't owe me tomorrow. You go downstairs and you hit the ATM. Especially the surcharge. And then there's a $5 surcharge to go along with that. That is the level of pettiness that I aspire to. Got that extra icy, icy rolling in case I feel like getting extra flossy. Is there anything more Dayton than a white guy dressed like this talking about his icy, icy roly? And next up, the Ying Yang Twins, classic episode. Hey, you, how y'all doing? You, come on in. These are the musical geniuses who brought you songs like Your Daughter Likes That Dick. Your daughter like that dick. She like that dick. Obviously, this isn't like their real house. So one of the people in their crew was like, oh, I got to run to my house for cribs. Uh, let's see, which one should I pick? Oh, the one with the sailboat. That's the one for Ying Yang Twins. We decorated this ourselves now. When I see these, I said, I gotta get it when I see these. We'll just put a case of crunk juice in the kitchen and nobody will suspect a thing. Like right, Luton, they say, yeah! What? Remember crunk juice? Didn't it get banned by the FDA like Four Loco and the original formulation of Sparks? I have to say, you know, I hope I live for a very long time, but if I gotta go, that's how I want it to be. Oh, what happened to Finn? He got too crunk. R.I.P. Walmart, 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 Walmart. And next up, Travis Barker of Blink-182. And this is my crib, welcome. And these days, Travis is a big time celebrity who you see in the gossip headlines for dating a Kardashian. I think he's figured out how to be like the cool edgy rocker guy that can still hang out with A-list celebrities like that. But I love this era of Travis because it was when he was still basically just a poor kid from the IE who'd come into a little bit of money, but he hadn't really grown into it yet. Another painting, it's uh, Mila Jovovich. Really beautiful, one of my favorite actresses and models. Like buying art. I mean, that's what fancy rich people do, right? But he still doesn't really know what good art is. So he bought this weird, bad painting of the hot chick from Resident Evil. I usually watch like a lot of gangster movies, kind of. Scarface. Big Inland Empire energy right here, watching Scarface. Remember Orange County drums? With those vented snares that are loud as fuck. With holes in them, so you're louder than everybody else. Another major drip alert right here. We need to bring this back too, the Dickies Shants with high socks kind of look. The perfect match for the girl with the Juicy Couture track pants and whale tail. And remember when Escalades with rims were the big status symbol? Now you gotta have a Bentley, but back then you could just go buy a Cadillac off the lot, put some rims on it and you were cool. It was a simpler time. First of all, we gotta start with the Escalade. We gotta start with the Escalade. Like, why are you talking like this, Aaron Carter? And next up, Chris Angel, the famous magician. Major, major drip alert right here. This man has goals. A leather shirt unbuttoned halfway down his chest. Not one, not two, but three necklaces. Chain wallet, dad hat, and the ultimate touch, the watch worn over his shirt sleeve. That icy, icy roly, as Rob Deerdeck would say. This is the formal living room. You remember how I said there's the rich people cheesecake factory aesthetic? And this is the ultimate example. This literally looks like the lobby to a cheesecake factory. That's actually my blood. I actually cut my hand and did that. This is like something a guy in a local black metal band would tell you at the bar after the show. And you're like, uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> I actually like this a lot. And I have countless amounts of rejection letters and it's kind of ironic how they're wishing me all the success in my career and basically saying, you know, we're not interested in you. And in here, the heading uh, speaks for itself. And to be clear, he actually does seem like a really good guy. And I think it's really impressive what he's accomplished. 
And let's take a quick look at a highlight reel of my personal favorite part of Cribs. All the dated technology that was like a big flex back then. And now with stuff that you wouldn't even buy at Goodwill. This is an HD TiVo unit, which is hard to come by. This thing is awesome. Entertainment center powers this big thing right here. Damn, bro, a 36-inch TV. I was at a hotel in Germany, and uh, the bathtub had an actual TV right in front of it. So I decided to uh, get a TV. Howie from the Backstreet Boys has more money than God, and his flex <laughs> is to put a 12-inch TV VCR combo in a shower propped up with like a phone book. I love Melissa Joan Hart's like corporate office kind of aesthetic. And why does she have all these hotel phones in her house? And you take the tape player adapter and plug it into your MP3 player, boom! This is AJ from Backstreet Boys. This is my second Cribs. There's a lot going on in this one. For one, a great example of the rich person Cheesecake Factory aesthetic. And another major drip alert. The Ed Hardy shirt with baggy diesel jeans and a chain wallet. The leather wrist cuff, the excessive jewelry. This is one of my three hookahs. When I'm not kicking it in my living room, I just sit here, have a hookah, and look out at the ocean. And This part reminds me of buying drugs. Like some dude who looks like this sitting there telling you about how his hookah gives him inner peace. And he's just going on and on and on about it. And in your head, you're like, dude, can you please shut the fuck up and just give us the Coke? Martinelli's. That's what I drink. A little more love for Martinelli's. Good man. This is a true traditional Samurai sword. This is another drug dealer moment. Like, after you just do a line with him, and he gets out the sword, and you're like, bro, please put the sword down. I don't want to die like this. But just to be clear, AJ McLean does seem like a cool guy, so no offense intended. I'm Benji Madden. I play in the band Good Charlotte. Come on in. Now, I like this one a lot because I think Benji was kind of in the same place as Travis Barker around this time. Like a lower class guy who's like kind of trying to be fancy, but I like how self-aware he is about the fact that his house has like a haunted cheesecake factory kind of look. I had these uh, curtains put up because um, I like to read a lot of vampire books, so I wanted my house to feel kind of like that. What would a rich person put in this room? Like a painting of Napoleon and an antique rocking horse, I guess? Got a picture of Napoleon. I don't know if there's any significance to that because I didn't go to college, but Napoleon sure sounded pretty cool. It's a little bit weird, but to be fair, an antique rocking horse does feel like something a rich person would have in their house. The famous Madden chandelier. It's been passed down through my family for generations. It's uh, from a castle in Ireland. I love how he just says blatant bullshit like this, but he plays it so straight that a lot of people probably thought it was real. And they're like, hey, where's the Madden family castle in Ireland? People can get past the dog, but nobody gets past the tiger. And the unforgettable Steve-O episode. Yeah, dude. Welcome to Casa Dis. It literally makes me a little bit sick to my stomach to watch. Probably because I have been to way too many of these like gross punk rock flop houses with seven 19 year olds living in a two bedroom apartment. I mean, did you, these carpets come stained like this or is it something you did or? Like the bathroom reminds me of that trashy friend we all had growing up whose parents were slobs and their whole house was like this. My friend like this was named Andy. I remember all their Nintendo games are sticky from getting Kool-Aid spilled on them. It's all stoner food. It's just egos and pizzas and hungry man and cereal. I love Johnny Knoxville's like authentic disdain and contempt. I really like what you haven't done with the place. <laughs> This is disgusting, Steve-O. And note that they were not 19 when they did this. Like, Steve-O was like 30. I finally found a, a condom for the smaller man. And of course, the iconic Red Man episode. Should I give y'all the tour right now? Next time y'all need to find me, you know, just rub these two wires for the doorbell. And you know it's gonna be good when his doorbell is touching two wires together. This literally looks like a 15-year-old stoner kid's room. It's what I got, you know, the walk-in closet. Notice how big and sectiony it is. Sectiony is a word, right? But I keep the Nintendo and the Dreamcast. Seems like the kind of guy that would play a lot of Power Stone. The vibe I'm looking for in this apartment is the bachelor's crib. Don't even have a coffee table. I love the multiple gold records like laying around in the corner. Reminds me of one time when my friend and I were walking around downtown LA and we found a gold record from that band Cold just laying against the wall in an alley, but neither of us cared enough to pick it up and take it home. So we just left it there. Oh yeah, that's my cousin right there. He you know, he'd he be knocked out over here, you know. This might be fake, I don't know, but something tells me that that actually is his cousin, like, 
passed out cold on the floor. Old tour emblems, you know I'll be saving. Saving tour laminates like a mediocre regional metalcore band that made completely unnecessary laminates for a four day tour in a 150 mile radius of their hometown. And of course the shoe box full of money on top of the fridge. This is what I call the dollar box. And next up, Fieldy from Corn. This is not the best episode, kind of not that entertaining. I like stuff that's gonna be, you know, 50 years is still gonna be in style. Yeah, I don't know if I would say this is timeless design, but you know, on the other hand, in a sense, he's right. It's very likely that there will still be people like your Aunt Janet from Mayfield, Ohio, with a living room that looks like this in 50 years in 2071, at least assuming that Elon Musk's robot army hasn't dominated us by then. I'm Ryan Pinkston and welcome to my CRIB crib. Come on in. This is the little kid from Punked. What's going on, dog? Uh, 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 uh. What's going on, dog? He looks like every kid who would get arrested in fifth grade for shoplifting like a Tupac shirt from Macy's or something. Just gasta, sparkling cider. He does have good taste in beverages though. Martinelli's is amazing. I like to keep a lot of fan mail that people give me in. I was surprised by this. Like who is sending fan mail to the kid from Punked? What in the hell is this? This is literally one of the ugliest rooms I have ever seen in my life. It's like if you could only decorate your house with stuff from the Christmas clearance section at Ross. Hello, I'm Rob Zombie and uh, this is my house. So uh, come on inside and I'll show you some weird stuff. To be honest, I kind of thought this one would be a little bit more entertaining. It's really kind of not. I get where he's headed with it, but mostly it just seems like really uncomfortable and unnatural. It's like when somebody famous dies and they turn their house into a museum. Like who would ever want to actually sit in this room? Pirate bar, it wasn't a pirate bar, but it looked like a pirate bar, so we made it a pirate bar. And the pirate bar. Remember the trend of like zombies, pirates, and ninjas? Like that one Hello Goodbye album or whatever? It's just a kitchen. I'm kind of disappointed that this isn't some like gimmicky horror kitchen. Like you turn the faucet on and it pours blood and stuff of water. Our thought for the bedroom was to make it look like a cross between a haunted mansion and a cheap whorehouse. And I think you did exactly that. And next up, Tony Hawk. I've always been a big fan of his because he was kind of the PG rated nerd of all the 80s skaters. You know, I'm not a very edgy guy, so I always kind of identified with him. Before I show you inside, I'm going to show you the car is outside. As a fan of Japanese luxury sedans, I always liked that he was a Lexus guy. This one's got a PS2 DVD, keeps the kids entertained. I kind of wish I had a PS2 in my car now, actually, so I could play Final Fantasy X-2, collect all the dress spheres, and maybe when I'm stuck in traffic, rotate the camera a little bit so I can see some Riku side boob if I'm lucky. This is Keegan's Playhouse. That might be the whitest sentence of all time. This is Keegan's Playhouse. All right, this is the backyard. There's sort of an Asian theme back here. Why do so many rich people think that Asian themed is fancy? And I love how they just mix and match like Japan, China, India, whatever. It's all Asia, right? And next up, Love from POD. Checking out my crib today. So if you guys want to come check it out. And I don't really have anything like snarky or funny to say about this one. They just genuinely seem like really nice guys that are into spending time with their families. Just the kind of people that I would like to be friends with. This is my game room. This is where I come in here with my kids and play video games and whatnot. I mean, watching this, don't you just want to go over to his house and play some Tony Hawk Pro Skater with him? Hey, Tony, right. yeah. give me a piece of carne asada. Let me try that out. <laughs> it's interesting. There's something about Chicano metal bands and grilled meat that just goes hand in hand. I'm Ryan Sheckler, and this is my crib. I love this one because he's like the actual human version of that rich suburban kid from the 2000s starter pack. On to the next room, my home theater. This is my home theater, AKA my mom's living room. This is my favorite part though. You can't have a freezer without homemade bulk and pepperoni pizza. I love that he is just here to move product for his sponsors and he doesn't give a shit. If he made this today, he'd probably have a Raid Shadow Legends pizza in the fridge. I respect the hustle. What's up everybody? I'm Ryan Cabrera. Also not super interesting, but I wanted to include him here because he somehow managed to combine the mid 2000s like white belt emo look with that Orange County MILF aesthetic. Like the belt and the hoodie and the keys on a carabiner say Pete Wentz, but the hair says newly divorced mom from Newport Beach. And last but not least, Sammy Hagar of Van Halen. Welcome to uh, the Cobble Wobble Beach Pavilion. I legitimately aspire to this kind of like chill boomer, Tommy Bahama, Jimmy Buffett kind of energy someday. If you get bored with this or if you get like jaded with this, 
you need to be slapped. I mean, this is like legitimately a good message. A lot of people get rich and they're still never happy because they can't learn to be content with what they have. So I'm into this message. This is all I want out of life. I want to be this guy. The only kind of shirts I have down here are t-shirts, beach shirts. The worst flip-flops and sunglasses indoors and his closet is nothing but Tommy Bahama and random t-shirts from like beach towns in Florida. All right, my friends, that does it for this video about the genius of MTV Cribs. Let me know what you think in the comments, what your favorite episodes were, and what other shows you would like me to talk about in the future. Make sure you join my Discord. We're up to like almost 3,000 people now. There's a link to that in the description. And as always, I want to thank everyone who supports us on Patreon, especially those of you who support at the True Cult level or above. Patrons get every podcast a week early. There's a members-only private Discord server that I'm super active in. I do giveaways. I do Q and A's. There's a way to have me review your music or artwork or anything else you want to get my eyes or ears on. So if that sounds cool to you, check out the link to that in the description as well. And with that, I'm going to sign off for now, but I will see you next time.